Halo Season 2, Episode 7. 7. Man, I'm so far behind with this show. I keep thinking we're, like, one behind. It's so boring. Like, But you guys really enjoyed last week's review with John, so I brought him back. Hey, hey. I'm glad to be back. It's always a privilege, and I'm glad people are enjoyed, enjoyed me coming to Vaughn. Halo Season 2, Episode 7, The Silver Timeline. The show, well, sorry, the episode where they keep saying something's going to happen, but nothing ever happens. It's just that, 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 the whole episode. But we did get Chief in his armor with no helmet, though, mind you. The last bit of it, yeah. Trash. Anyway, so what's your initial take on this shit episode? I was, yeah, a lot of babbling. There's so much they're trying to stuff in so much. They got like five different plot lines going on between Parangovsky and Ackerson. You got Chief, you got the whole uh, Kai and uh, Perez stuff. And you also have Soren and and Halsey. There's they're trying. They, they've got so many different like side plots going on that it just all becomes a big mess. And a lot well, of let's, them have. Let's actually start with Soren because his side quest has been going for about three episodes now. Now, and considering the name of this episode, I kind of thought his side quest was going to wrap up in this one. Like his was all about like the Spartans, and then it talks about him yeah. as a kid and. With his son, which has been kidnapped to go in like the Spartan program, and we still don't have a conclusion to this side quest. Yep, and uh, that whole plotline, at least for this episode, to me, it, it seemed like the writers wanted to go for this like angle of misogyny versus misandry or some kind of thing. That's the way I took it because it was like I get Thorns there. He made a few points in this episode, like of recollecting about his past with. Uh, in the Spartan 2 program, talking about the situation that he they were about to watch uh, to see Kessler get into because he was captured by the UNSC to be a part of the Spartan 3 program, which even throws a little bit of a friggin' wedge into what's going on with the Spartan 3s. Like, are they military personnel? Are they war orphans? It's just literally everything and anything. And it just, it, it doesn't make, it doesn't quite make my, my sense take if you're going from for one Spartan of the other. Spartan 3s, Silver Timeline Spartan 3s, was they seemed a lot more like Spartan 4s because. Yep. Well, the only one that we really know is Perez, and she's not well, a war orphan. Yep, and you can look at the rest of them. They're all young gun, young guns, all rookies, green as green as hell. And it just, you know, that just tells me that they were all like military personnel who came in, that rookie that just wanted to go into the branch. But now they got this like whole. They wanted to have they want to have their cake and eat it too when it comes to the Spartans, Spartan threes. Just, yeah, it was you know. very bizarre, man. But Soren's side quest is still going. We're going into the final episode of the season. We still don't have a conclusion to that whole thing. All right, and next week I want to talk about is Ackerson. To me, Ackerson's portrayal in the show has been abysmal, but I think you can say that for pretty much every character in this one, in this show, sorry. But this Silver Timeline Ackerson's character arc is all over the place. Very much. So, we get him being like, I don't care what happens to Reach, you know, blah, 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 all that type of stuff. But he's like, my Spartan freeze, I gotta get decimated. It's like, yeah. I care about them. I care about them. It's like, you let a whole planet burn. Again, and I am gonna take this opportunity to once again say, this entire season was advertised as the fall of Reach and it happened off screen. I'm never gonna let that go. But yep. yeah, Atkinson, what the fuck? I'm so He's, uh, yeah, like you said, he's all over the place. At least beforehand in the previous episodes, there was like at least one thread of consistency with him. You know, that despite all, you know, despite all the situations or any occurrences that happen, you know, the, you know, the simulations are telling him that it's going to be this way. They have to, fo he has to follow it through, make sure that, you know, to assure the safety of humanity in his own perspective. What would have worked with this, and, and but with this episode, it, he basically flips completely. Like, we what we what you needed there is some sort of scene that shows him progress or develop into recognizing like this um, uh, fa a fa being a fatherly figure or being responsible for those people you know for the Spartan threes, like kind of growing into like a, uh, a his own kind of Halsey where he mm -hmm. has a kind of a parenting feeling about these kids. But we never got that. It was just an instant flip right in the first two minutes of the episode to. Uh, just get you know just, just get him to a point where the writers wanted him to be which is kind of write him off and actually no, i think much. it was a few weeks ago you said that this show this season was kind of setting up for season three to be combat evolved yep. i think you're right 
Oh yeah, they've absolutely. Got, they've I'd... gotten rid of everyone. They've just kind of cleared the board. Mm -hmm. But it still doesn't really work because there's no Jacob Keys. There's no Pillar of Autumn. But we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, so the episode starts with Mackie and Cheeks. They're doing their cyber fucking hookup thing. And I believe they're on a digital Halo ring, kind of like in the first season. And I'm thinking, oh no, it's going to happen again. But it doesn't happen again. And there's this meme going around on Twitter going, fuck it. It's just like a picture of Mackie and like her whole speech. And the caption just says, fucking white women. <laughs> Yeah, and I put. think that meme's pretty accurate. Yeah, very much. I mean, she's, it's this whole, like, I don't know, she's going at it like this, cri uh, this uh, critical point of, like, where everybody is, everybody is inherently evil except for me and you because we have the ideological, the ideal, the good ideology on our side and we should be the ones inherent in the universe. And Chief ain't all about that. He's very, very much pro-human, at least, you know, to an extent. To an extent. He, and, he uh, and he completely disagrees with him at that uh, with her on that, and she finally sees it. Like, oh, I see it now. And they really like exaggerated that point. You have doubt. It, it was just. It was just it came across weird. Do you know what I was thinking? Okay, so Mackie is Kylo Ren, and Master Cheeks is Ray. That's kind oh, of the vibe yeah, I got much. from them too. <laughs> oh, freak! Yeah, there's so many like Last Jedi reference. Uh, references you can make with this show too especially with like the the spike the whole like blow everything up but it's basically what they want to do is the holdo maneuver mm -hmm. be, yeah just completely wipe out everything in front uh wipe everything out um okay so then continuing from the blue balls of the end of the last episode we get the conclusion to the sword fight that's going on the energy sword fight of all the elites that's going on and dude this has to be one of the weakest endings ever, man. So as that fight's going on, Mackie makes a run for it, and uh, the priest, the Madama priest, chases her. And the priest gets into like a conversation with Cortana. Don't really have a problem with that. Cortana's just going through the records, being like, I know who you are, blah, 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 blah. And then Mackie comes up behind him and stabs him in the back. Like, we couldn't get like a fight between yeah. him and this Silver Timeline's Arbiter. We couldn't get a one-on-one -on -one with them, them two going at it. That would have been cool. Instead, it's just duh, through the back, done. Wait. Yeah, it would have been nice to at least see her try to defend herself, you know, or fight back. You know, him actually not being a little more competent than just doing a 180 and getting stabbed in the heart and get his, you know, his entire chest ri uh, ripped up with an energy sword. But uh, they didn't want to have this. Uh, they didn't want to have this high CGI fight. And all they gave us was a few clips. At least we got like, like it's very quick, but we got one shot of like the elite, one elite trying to go after Maki, and the Arbor comes out and stabs mm. him right in the back. You see it blow up from his chest. That was a really nice shot, but it's so quick. You have to like slow it right down to really get it. I really appreciate it. I will That's it. Give some positivity. There is a part where the priest is talking to Cortana and. I reckon there's this one little shot of her. I reckon that's the best any elite has looked in this show. Do you remember in the first episode, the very first episode, where they looked like uh, Krogans from Mass Effect? Yeah, the bulkiness, yeah. <laughs> they definitely Wait, look they... better now. Oh yeah, yeah they did a better job with this. <laughs> yeah. The other thing this whole episode does is really, really, in case anyone hadn't figured it out yet, the, the, the humans are the bad guys in this show. This episode... Pushes it in your face. Paranoski is the main villain. Uh, Akerson's kind of like the, the B villain in this whole thing. So, hey, Paramount, you want to portray Indian women as villains? You got my support there, but can we have some aliens just to, you know, make it a bit cooler as well? And it, 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 I don't know why they keep bringing back that same that same soldier that was at Visigard and then in the previous episode. They seem to really want to do something with this character, but... All she does is just get knocked out in the back when Kai comes up and smacks her because she catches up with Chief with her team and she's like, arrest this man, you know, very Del Rio and none of the soldiers want to do it. They all just fuck off and leave. Uh, hopefully that's the last we see of her because, damn, I found her very annoying in the previous episode. Oh, I don't know why we didn't mention this at the start. John, who was the smartest scientist in the entire, in, in all of humanity in the Halo universe? Oh, in, in all of humanity, of his she's that the Halsey. <laughs> well, at least as far as I remember. Quan! Quan figures oh, yeah, out what Halsey true. couldn't do. 
Oh yeah, and it was really freaking dumb. It's like both the two like leading scientists understand with an understanding of xenobiology and everything of that that's going on. They they couldn't even recognize that the time the timeline of stars the way that they're set up is is you know is the way that the mapping is for the whole hologram scene that we got that should have been like something easily known because we're talking about ancient aliens they're obviously the the universe the galaxy that we're in the milky way it ain't going to be sitting the same everything in the same place it's constantly expanding even that that's like basic science you know for you know basic space science that you learn way back as a kid and they talked about how Halsey was in there for four months trying to figure out part of these puzzles. Quan can figure it out in like two minutes just by looking around going, I got this. And it's such a shock. <laughs> and, it's, and Halsey yeah. looks like an idiot. Because um, they open up this they door like and there's like the, the bridge and all this shit. Uh, and then you see like, a, well, I actually want to, what do you think it was that they found with that human looking thing that was holding something? What do you think that was? I think it, uh, I think it's their form of a forerunner holding an icon possibly i i really could it's really hard to tell it's all like a shriveled up body it definitely yeah as first glance it really kind of doesn't look like a any forerunner uh image or picture that we've i've seen yeah okay it's, and then as the whole thing starts the cave in indiana jones style they're running back along the bridge and the bridge is uh, disappearing behind them again very indiana jones and yeah. halsey just stops to look around go Look how cool this is! It's a whole city! Wow! And they're like screaming at her going, you're gonna die, that bridge is like falling apart, can you catch up? And she's just, oh, wow! But don't worry, the mighty Quan is there to take the lead. And save yeah, everyone. she took the lead. Yeah, well, at, I think they were just trying to get this like uh, sentimental moment between Miranda and Halsey, you know, so that having a stressful moment, finally having her call her mom, and snapping her into, into reality it's i don't know it didn't come off as well because just 10 15 feet further if she walked she would be completely safe yes yeah, things would be tumbling down but she wouldn't be on a hard light bridge like she was well, what it, i think yeah. it should have been is they should have been running along the bridge and she should be like looking taking notes as they're running and then when they get out they're gonna go what was that and she goes well this is what i saw blah 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 blah, blah. they're gonna be like whoa you managed to notice all that while we're running for our lives and she could be like well, fucking Catherine Halsey, motherfucker you forget yourself all right and yeah. then from there we get to spartan freeze mm -hmm. we're gonna get to see spartan freeze in action no we're not yeah we're not. <laughs> we're not. so they go to engage a covenant fleet and it's like the massive fleet and uh, all you see is Paranoski, you know, get on the comms with them. You know, go, hey, go kick their ass. And then they're like, yeah, we got this. And then all you see is on, like, the computer screen that shows, like, the battle where you can see, like, the dots of all the ships. It's just them disappearing. Boom, 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 boom. You don't see them getting blown up or anything. It's just disappearing off the map. Pretty yeah, weak. Cheaper this Pretty weak. It's cheaper this way. <laughs> And this is when Ackerson starts to have his breakdown. My Spartans, I miss my Spartans. Oh, and the other thing with the Spartan Freeze as well is they are really trying to set up Perez as like this Sarah Palmer type character where she's the bad bitch just going to take the lead. But you can't really do that without something happening. Like as much yes. as we all like to bag out Sarah Palmer, at least she did something. Yep. At least with her, you know, she earned her. She somewhat earned her spot took a little bit after the first introduction of her with the game to have her earn her spot and with perez it's just she's she's been like wow she's been streamlined to like the, the spartan 3 program from her communications job as you know in in the uh, unsc it's yeah it's definitely uh, unrealistic with what they've done and it's obvious to everybody okay and then from there we have chief and kai confront Ackerson. And in case, you know, I've said this a few times, but this was the episode where it was 100% undeniable. He is doing a Christian Bale Batman impersonation the whole episode. He confronts Ackerson. Where's my armor? Alfred, where, Ackerson, where's my armor? That's the whole conversation. And it eventually takes him uh, and Kai to their, where they're keeping Cheeks' armor and Banax. I did not see Rizzers there. I might be mistaken, but they make a point of those two pieces of armor. 
and and they kind of get into this whole conversation about how like well you know once we go public with this information everyone's going to turn against Paranoski and turn against you but you know it's your time to take the fall and all that but that's I don't know, it's a bit like I was saying before about Ackerson's character arc, it's just so flip-floppy. It wasn't like he was like a, okay, I gotta do this. It was just, oh shit, Chief choked me out, I should probably do this. It seemed a bit weak to me. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I agree with you. I I see like what they were going at it with this, but they needed, they lacked a few, you know, a few scenes to make that development. They just completely jumped right into that situation with her. Like with Parangovsky, where she says, send the second wave, and you go, what? Well, yeah, that's mm. what they were built for. And I, it's just, it's kind of hard, hard for it to make many, much sense because they've been training for this near pop, this suicide job the entire time. It's the one thing that he's ha been having him train. And it's only now that he's realizing that it's a suicide job. And they were no, there was no expectations for any of the Spartan 3s to escape. And it's, uh, it just comes across as. You know, he's supposed to be looked at as an intelligent individual in the show, but this is like that is one of the dumbest, like a, like it went way over his head. You can't be you can't be intelligent and oblivious about that at the same time. And then uh, from that, it goes into Kai saying, well, look, I'm going to go with the freeze because I'm basically this universe's Kurt. So I go where the freeze go. And that's just what you were saying before about how they've kind of written off every character. So that means that Cheeks can get to the ring. Uh, and oh, yeah. basically do combat evolve, but he's missing Cortana, so I guess that will happen in the next episode. But we'll, we'll get to, we'll, to be fair, he's missing keys, the pillar of order, the uh, he's missing everything that makes combat evolve, combat evolve. Yep, but I think that's what's going to happen in the next episode. He's going to meet up with uh, Cortana and Maki on the Covenant ship, and I'm pretty, maybe heck, we might even get Kai and Perez on that same ship as well. And that's what that's what they're going to blow up to take out the Covenant fleet. I don't know what. That, because that's with the previews and stuff that's looks like and with this episode it looks like that's the only way they're gonna have you know they're gonna have what they want for next season to do that kind of stuff if you watch like the trailers and clips and stuff they pretty much uh spoiled the ending you know? oh really essentially well it, it's gonna be it, it, i i suspect it's supposed to be some silly plot twist in the next episode but yeah chief's not gonna go directly to halo he's gonna go and join the spartan threes and help out what? He's gonna do a oh, 180 and turn around. I he's gonna he, not exactly a 90 degree, you know, take a left, a little side, a little side job before he goes directly to Halo. Because, like we said, he does have to get Cortana to you know and bring and have her with him on the Halo if they're gonna want to do Halo CE for for season three. So it's gonna but go the episode, that direction. Jumping ahead a bit, but the episode ends with him getting close to the ring. Like the best part of this whole episode is when you can see the ring in the distance and the music plays for like two seconds and it cuts to black. So yeah, I guess he is gonna have to like, do it, and, you know, have like some conscious kick in or something. I I see that because I don't see any other way for him him to get Cortana without taking that turn, taking that little sidestep from direct, you know, other than going directly to Halo. Well, speaking of Cortana. One of the last scenes we get of Mackie and the Arbiter, and obviously Cortana is on that ship, is the Arbiter comes in and he talks about, hey, you know, we've killed all the infidels. Uh, his words, not mine. We've killed all the infidels. And Mackie's like, oh, I don't have my blessed powers anymore. And the Arbiter's like, you have shown me the way to redeem my honor. And I'm not going to go into my arbiter rant here, but it's like I don't care because you don't. We don't know what your what your great dishonor is. Like, what was your failure that made you the arbiter in the first place? So, I just have no motivation to care about that. And then, in some weird BDSM moment, Mackie decides to burn herself. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a freaky dude, but what the fuck? She just starts burning herself with a mark of shame, and then the arbiter's like, "We are connected." Yeah, and says no. We are, yeah, we are bound to get bound yeah. to each other. No, we are bound to the ring, and it just—I don't know. It was just some weird convolute. It made sense in their heads. Like, that's all I could say. You know it what it is? It's like not... you know when um, there's like a teenage couple that are in love. It's the first boyfriend girlfriend thing. And like, hey, yeah, you know exactly where I'm yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, Everyone yeah, else yeah. is looking, going, no, "What yeah, are you exactly. doing?" It's like, yeah. can't you just carve your names into a tree or some shit? It's like, now nah, we gotta burn ourselves, <laughs> yeah, yeah. man. We're staying up all night watching Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox interviews. Um, 
All right, and then and then it's like they their ship starts getting attacked by the Covenant because the fleet has found them, and they're so fucked. They're just one ship. But do you think yeah. that's also how the Covenant, like the larger Covenant, is going to find the ring because they're chasing them? I think yeah, that's essentially. I think so. Yeah, because they are, they all chase them down, and yeah, they're saying that they are at the Halo. We haven't exactly seen it. All we've seen is like the last bit. Where, yeah, he's at Halo, the fleet's there right next to it. I don't, um, honestly right, don't know how it's going to work. I, I Unless, yeah, they got to they gotta blow up the fleet. Of, what, are they going to have that entire fleet sitting there to attack? The, I don't know. It's... What you think about it? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, one of the last scenes is to do with Soren, where he finds his kid, and the kid gets taken again. So... <laughs> That's just the never-ending story with that one. Yeah, that was super confusing to me because at one point, at one point, Soren's like, "Yeah, let him go through this fight. Let him deal with. Uh, let him go through what I went through here." And yeah, let you know, him have his moment. Figure, yeah, figure out whether he's a warrior or a coward. And yeah. it was just really weird for Soren to dive into that while at the same time re acknowledging everything, all the problems and issues with the Spartan program. And he now he, he just wants at that one moment he wants his son to experience that it just didn't make any sense it, it's it seemed very forced so that they can have this like you know blind misogyny versus like uh strong well they think it is a strong femininity of you know protection of the child from uh what's her face there soren's wife and it just for me it just came off as uh mis uh you know a mis misogyny versus misandry and it just didn't make sense whatsoever yeah, I was pretty confused about it. And then um, Jimmy Rings goes to say goodbye to Sarah Palmer. I mean, Perez <laughs> pops in and says, hey, I'm not coming with you. Bye. And then just fucks off and leaves her. But like he says, based off the clip, it looks like he has to turn around and come back to save the day. Yeah. And then right at the end, we see the Spartan Freeze uh, are with Kai and they line up and they're ready to do the attack. That's the last thing we see of them. Um, but two things to talk about. One is to do with Paranoski. So it's been exposed that Master Chief is still alive. So that means that the whole narrative about Reach is bullshit. So she's screwed. She's screwed. Assuming they all survive. Same with Ackerson. So that's going to start to wrap up. So they are trying to close down this whole... And for the love of God, stop calling it ONI. They're trying to close down this whole Oni story after they have going on here being the villains. But then, with Miranda and uh, Halsey, Catherine, uh, one of the last things we see is Miranda playing around with some type of DNA thing. And some people are speculating that this is a flood reference. Actually, yeah, it is very much. A, there is a very much a flood reference. If you looked at the uh, the bridge at the door at the other end of the hard light bridge, which I gotta say, that set the look of the look and yeah, design, that looks great. I kind of geeked out when I watched that. No, that did look great. That did the look original great. Halo design, you know, of uh, Forerunner designs of the doors and the hallways and such. It was go it was a beautiful. I really liked that. But with uh, but yeah, that being, you know, what were we saying? Flood. You're talking about the flood. Yes. Oh, yeah the it's uh the it's on that door there were two symbols on it on the bottom there was the symbol of the guardians and on above oh. there was the symbol of the flood so this place was actually a la a research facility d uh conducting research on the flood if you had noticed in the uh in those little vials that they had there were samples of the flood infection and that's and I suspect this is just speculation on my part but I suspect what it, what happened why it all caved in was a fail safe from the forerunners that because keep the door the opened trap. up exactly keep the flood trap there was an overexposure keeping the door wide open on the other side while there's active active sample inactive inert samples going on yeah forerunners aren't going to take any chance they're going to shut everything down and that's what happened and that would make a lot of sense because with uh the inst uh this inst but they did change onyx for the silver timeline with this being i guess it might be a shield originally onyx in canon is the is also known as the sarcophagus which is actually a shield world that can protect those inside from the halo halo rings from firing they won't be affected but now it's changed into this uh, some sort of like research laboratory facility 
that uh, a library, you know, a whole storehouse of knowledge and information. So I guess we were wrong. It wasn't a portal to a Halo ring. Thank God we were wrong on that. But hey. <laughs> and that's where the episode ends with our boy Jimmy Rings, the Master Cheeks, closing in on the Halo ring. We have one episode to go. One. And they have so much to wrap up. But at the same time, very little. Because nothing's happened. But there's like all these lingering threads. That's probably yeah. my biggest problem individually. In isolation, that's my biggest problem with this episode. Putting aside the whole silver timeline. And, you know, it's hard to criticize just one episode. Because so many of the problems just come from the whole show. But to put it in isolation, the problem with this episode was... This episode was, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Any minute now. It's going to happen. And then the episode ends. It's just a, nothing happens. It's just yep. a build up. Yep. A complete build up for uh, what their grand finale, which, you know, with everything that's going, everything that they have to close up, they're probably, it's probably going to be an extended episode. You get a little extra 10 minutes to it. You have, to, have to, to wrap things up properly. It's got to have a battle as well, though, because there's only been one battle yep. episode. Isn't yep. this what last season did? They had two battles, uh, one about halfway through, then one at the end. Yeah, they had to, the two major battles. Well, then they you had the intro, of the first episode, their introduction, small introduction, yeah. the small firefight. And yeah, two uh, two major major f uh, fights, two set, two major set pieces to work with. Yeah, same formula. I wonder if they'll do the same thing. How um, you know, at the end of the last season where he died where we kind of accidentally got a Master Chief cameo where he actually shut the fuck up and did stuff. I wonder <laughs> if they'll do that at this as well, where we're going to get another cameo of Master Chief where he's going to do something as well. With her, yeah, uh, yeah it might, that might be the case. Uh, once uh, he and Cortana, Master Cheeks and Cortana here get together, they might actually give us a proper Master Chief being silent mm -hmm. and such, but I doubt it. But I have watching a lot of, oh, uh, what? I took, the time to watch a few reviews from a lot of people you know all across on youtube and the you know the the attitude towards the show has definitely changed it is not as optimistic and positive as it once was when it began because of all the things that have happened in a few episodes i could say one thing ah. uh, hidden ex hidden Xperia. yeah he's he's like <laughs> his mind's all like blown out for from this and i at least halo follower they keep it uh, keeping it real you know, keeping it as honest as he as he can be, and which I always appreciate from him. Unlike and zero zero installation zero zero, who's just bending backwards. Oh yeah, he, he's one I didn't watch, but yeah, it's no, they uh, they're all seeing it for what it is. It's a you know, it's a, an absolute freaking mess. And if you're looking at the canon and you're looking at the stories that we love, it is a complete bastardization. Uh, speaking of bastardization, I, there's one thing I think I, I'm get uh, I'm falling on. For this season and what they're doing is with the dna mixture of forerunner and human you know where the particular individuals who were you know have that dna in them are the ones who are able to access uh all the forerunner technology the blessed the ones. that's it the, ba the, the blessed ones are bastardized you know, it's born stellar theory just given to all the spartans apparently all the spartans ha have the same for uh DNA chemistry going on in their in their body that Halsey that Halsey found uh, over at the at Onyx in that portal looking area doorway. Hmm. And yeah, it's yep, yeah, it's just another dumb bastardized version of uh, of what we love. Munted. But we're gonna wrap it here. We will have the breakdown uh, day or so after this goes public. Hope to see you all there. I'm going to leave a link to John's kick. He's been streaming pretty consistently over there. We've got to get him to 75 sure. followers. Follow him over there, and we'll see you all later. Bye.